Hi. Oh, that was kind of loud. Sorry. Hi. Um, I'm back. Wow. Okay. I. <laughs> it's been many months since I posted any sort of um actual Whisper Clan content. I'm so sorry. Uh, I've been extremely busy. Um with school uh yeah it's oh my gosh it has been so crazy i am graduating in august so that is nice i'm gonna get my bachelor's degree but that's the main reason why i haven't posted anything at all not even any community post and i got a little overwhelmed so i kind of dropped whisper clan for like what five months oh that's a lot of months but yeah here i am i'm back um <laughs> I have, I ha I've had the script for year three, and year three has happened, like, four or five months ago from when I'm recording now. I'm uh, so sorry. Um, I did have it all written out, but I just hadn't recorded or edited anything. I even had the drawings prepared for the most part, but I just, I couldn't work on the video because I had so much other stuff going on. But things are starting to slow down just a little bit so i thought i would take the opportunity to finally get year three out um i will um preface preface this preface this by saying that the editing style is going to be a little bit different um there's not going to be nearly as many visuals as i originally planned to have um where i wanted the series to go was to make it more based on visuals and also writing a ton about the relationships between cats um building on story more um but this video was going to be a little bit more simpler in terms of visuals and it's just going to be talking about all the things that i wrote about for year three um if possible, I'd like to, just for the sake of workload, turn Whisper Clan into more of like a podcast series so that you as the viewer focus more on the audio and listening in rather than actually actively watching the video. Because personally, whenever I consume any sort of clan gen content, I tend to like put a video on while I'm dry, uh, while I'm driving or doing something or drawing. And so I'm not really looking at the video. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but if you like the editing style of this video well enough, then I would most likely be able to get more Whisper Clan content out. Um, but if you guys prefer the visuals and the anim- anim- oh, Anna, oh my goodness. <laughs> If you guys prefer the animatics more rather than like more of a podcast style, then I can't say how much Whisper Clan content I can get out. So we're we're still figuring things out, but once again, if you guys like a more audio focused series, more videos are more likely to come out soon. If you guys like visually focused videos, then maybe not nearly as much content. But um, yeah, I just wanted to cover that, how I've been doing, where I want Whisper Clan to go as a series. Uh, let's just move on out to year three. I have the script here right in front of me, so after this little talking segment here, I'm just gonna go straight into just reading out what I had written months ago. I will say that this is probably going to be the longest video on Whisper Clan, apart from the, um, the, the gameplay ones where I just, like, post a very, like, um, non-edited video that, like, goes from, like, 45 minutes to an hour. It's not going to be nearly as long as that, but I do have... How many pages of script do I have? I have... I have eight pages! <laughs> so get ready for a lot of new cats, a lot of new developments, and let's just get right into it. Let's go. It's been about 12 moons in-game since last video, so once again, quite a few things did happen. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I do want to mention I have some timeline things planned out um, just regarding when I'm going to turn on things such as extinction events. 
um, doing things such as turning on the setting for when cats can mate with an unknown cat or maybe a cat from who knows where. Uh, things like that. I'm gonna have a visual pop up like when I finally figure out what years those things are gonna happen. But yeah, that's something new that I would like to implement just to keep the story interesting and keep things moving. Um, I also wanted to put more effort into developing stories for my cats. I realized that I didn't really focus much on like relationships, I guess, like friendships and um, how apprentices and mentors interact with each other. So there's a little bit more of that in year three. Um, and lastly, there is a prophecy, which I do have a short animatic for that will um, be revealed at the end of this video after we've gone over all of the cats and how they've been doing this year. So let's go on to the first cat who is new to Whisper Clan. We have on our roster, Rabbit Paw, uh, who is a 12 moon medicine cat apprentice. He's sneaky, a quick thinker, and uh, yes, I am making it canon that he is a pretty kitty. Should I make an official list of who the prettiest kitties in the clan are at some point? Only time will tell. This boy was found as a newborn potato by none other than our former deputy, Raytail. Rabbit Paw was abandoned until we found him, and it's unknown who his parents were or why they decided not to take care of him. What matters now is that he's here and he's safe. When he was a kit, he developed the trait bullying. Uh, the first time we've seen a cat with this personality in the clan. I was a bit worried until I saw Rabbit Paw change to being rebellious instead. This happened sometime after two more kits were brought into the clan. Due to the fact that Rabbit Paw himself decided that he wanted to be a medicine cat because, quote unquote, the thought alone of fighting and hurting another cat, unquote, made him shiver. Something about the arrival of the new kits caused him to change his mindset completely. Just a guess, I think what could have happened was that Rabbit Paw had gone too far with play fighting one day, messing with and injuring the kits on accident, which would have brought him to feel remorse to the point of thinking that even fighting as a warrior made him sick. So, instead of taking the usual route as a clan cat, he was given to Cotton Cinder to be trained as a medicine cat. In the full 12 moons of his life, he's gone from bullying, to rebellious, to now, sneaky. What a character arc, and he hasn't even finished his training yet. We still have a lot to see from this young cat. One more thing I'd like to mention is his relationship with his, ado uh, with his adopted dad, Raintail. Rabbit Paw actually has some dislike for him and is much more friendly with Destiny, Barley Star, Cotton Cinder, and Clover Splash especially. But he also trusts and respects Raintail. I'm assuming that uh, Raintail has a surprisingly strict and tough love method of parenting, which would explain the relationship status he holds for him. In comparison, his relationship with Cotton Cinder is much more relaxed, and the two of them can enjoy small talk on herb gathering patrols. That's all for Rabbit Paw, on to the next cat. Next is Tay, who actually died the same year after joining the clan. Super unfortunate, so here we are in Star Clan. At the beginning of the year, he ran into a border patrol asking if he could join the clan, which they said yes to. Our clan is pretty friendly, I think, especially since because we have Barley Star as a leader. Tay was originally a kitty pet, but he left home and took refuge into the forest after something terrible happened to his two legs. He's troublesome, clever, and a great hunter, so he had a lot of potential as a warrior. But later in the year, he got his leg caught in a two-leg trap. While he did escape, he was injured really badly, which led to him losing his leg altogether. He got over the loss of his limb pretty quickly and asked to go on patrols as soon as it was healed. But unfortunately, this did lead to his demise. On a border patrol with Oak Goose and Clover Splash, the group found themselves face to face with a dog. In their panic, Oak Goose and Clover Splash fled, not even realizing that Tay was lagging behind, getting caught by the vicious mutt. A really sad end for this tenacious kitty pet. Tenacious? Tenacious? I can't say words. He was so determined to prove himself. I'm sure his clanmates, while only knowing him for a couple moons, called him a true warrior as they mourned him. We'll see you in Star Clan, big guy. Back in the forest, our next new member of Whisper Clan is another former kitty pet called Chispa. I tried looking up what this name could mean, and apparently it's Spanish for spark. Apparently it's also the name of a Latin dating app. 
Um, considering how weird yet admittedly realistic the kitty pet names in this game are, Chispa totally could have been named after either of these things. Anyway, she's 95 moons old, a great storyteller, has steady paws, and is childish just like many of the other cats in this clan like Cloudtail. I guess kitty pets are just naturally oriented to be immature no matter the age. Anyway, she first met the clan when she ran into one of the patrols, being scared off by them. They did seem to leave an impression on her, however, because on the very next moon, she was at the border asking if she could join the clan as long as she could keep her name. Barley Star agreed, and they decided to go with Chispa on her first patrol to show her the ropes of being a warrior. Uh, her and Barley Star went on a hunting patrol, which she was unfortunately unsuccessful at catching a bird. Oh well. Barley Star snickered, encouraging her to brush it off and that they would try again next time. Chispa doesn't seem to be fully settled into clan life, however, because she snuck off to play with a kitty pet outside of the territory. And then she was attacked by a dog. When she came back limping, Barley Star had already suspected what happened, then chewed her out. Although she was much more worried rather than angry. Just stay safe, Chispa. Stick with Whisper Clan. Our next member is Velvet Shadow, who gave kits right before being found by our med cats, Cotton Center and Destiny. Of course they took her and the litter back to camp, resulting in their entry as new members of Whisper Clan. She's actually the first cat we've had in this clan with a cold personality, which I'm very excited for. It's about time we got some new traits in the game. Although, apart from her unique character, there's something else a bit suspicious about her. Barley Star was getting weird vibes from her, so she tried to pry into Velvet Shadow's past. I guess she's gotten charismatic, because Velvet Shadow was the one to ask if they could meet outside of the clan's territory. Late in the night, they met up, and Velvet Shadow revealed that she was originally from a different clan, but wouldn't reveal which one. She then proceeded to explain that she was kicked out due to some transgression. Barley Star tried to ask more questions, but Velvet Shadow refused, saying that she had already said enough. Now my question is, do we really want this cat in her clan? I'm sorry, what transgressions do you mean? I'm really worried that she has some bad intentions, but she really hasn't done anything to make anyone think that they shouldn't trust her. Barley Star even gave her an apprentice. Whatever. If Barley trusts her, I will too. But I'm keeping an eye out. Now that we've covered the mother, let's talk about her kits. She had a small litter, consisting of one she-cat and one tomcat. So let's start with Fuzzpaw, the daughter, who has now become an apprentice. She's being mentored by Chispa, but hasn't gotten much training done. This is because on her first patrol, she mistook a hare for a rabbit, which resulted in getting her eyes scratched out. Ouch. The year ended and she was still healing from the mishap, even after moons of treatment. I really hope she turns out okay. Apparently, if her eyes don't heal, there's a chance that she could be blinded. Fuzzpot is such a sweetheart and was like a ray of sunshine in the clan, totally oblivious to her status as a half-clan cat. While the concept of being from another clan is not nearly as looked down on in Whisper Clan, due to the fact that all of the founding members originally heeded from one of the other three clans in the forest, there's still some awkwardness and mistrust floating around. I'm just hoping for the best for her, and I want Fuzzpot to get her warrior name and prove herself as a loyal member of the clan. Get better soon. Next is Bluffpaw, Fuzzpaw's brother and Velvet Shadow's son. I really didn't expect to get so attached to this boy, but wow, drawing the characters myself and sort of developing their personality as I revise sketch does wonders. Something I really like about the pixel sprites is that they give just enough detail to give me a foundation on how the cats look, like colors and I guess like patterns, um, but they're vague enough so I can use a ton of artistic liberties, artistic freedom I guess. I can choose their eye shape, how big they are, the shape of their fur tufts, details like that. Where I'm going with all of this is that even though Bluffpaw's profile just lists him as compassionate and some other trait with his sprite, um, because of the drawing I've had of him, it's like we've introduced additional personality traits because the drawing I have of him makes him look very soft-spoken and shy. And while he and his sister share the trait of being compassionate, I imagine Fuzzpaw being much more outgoing and direct. For example, maybe if someone in the clan is having a bad day, she would just walk up to them and ask what's wrong. Bluffpaw, on the other hand, would be much more likely to either not say anything or approach that cat one-on-one -on -one and ask how their day is going. He's a very sweet boy, I love him. Speaking of being such a sweet boy, that doesn't necessarily mean he likes everyone. 
He actually has a considerable amount of, of dislike for Halau Tail. I think her personality is just a little strong for him, especially since she got a promotion. We'll get into that later. Moving on, another thing I found on his profile was located under permanent conditions. Apparently, since being born, he'll constantly get these terrible headaches. There's actually been times where he's needed to step out from training to find a quiet and dark place away from everyone, usually either in the medicine cat den or in the apprentice den. So the medicine cats have gotten pretty familiar with him. No matter, he'll become a warrior soon. Hang in there, honey. Next up is a brand new apprentice who was found as a kit by Barley Star and Halau Tail on a border patrol. It seems like Barley Star finds a lot of new people and just kind of invites them into the clan. <laughs> I don't know if this is just because she isn't able to say no or if this is like tactical so they can like get more cats into the clan so that they can defend themselves better. No matter. Um, introducing Bloompaw. Despite his very pretty name, this boy is a bit of an edgy guy for lack of a better term. He started off as a kit with a bullying trait, then as he got older, replaced this with being sneaky. But despite how quiet and seemingly apathetic he is, Fallow Splinter spotted Bloompaw's tail uh, twitching with excitement during his apprentice ceremony as the two touched noses. Bloompaw doesn't seem to like revealing his true feelings and has had a tricky time opening up to the cats in the clan. I'm wondering if the burn scars on his body hint as to why he's like this in the first place, but he doesn't seem to be the kind of person to reveal tragic memories, at least anytime soon. He also doesn't have a strong relationship with anyone, but I also hope this changes soon. WhisperClan is your family now, let them take care of you, Bloompaw. The last new cat to join WhisperClan this year is named Petalpaw. He ha actually has a rather interesting story about how he came to join the clan, but since this event is so closely tied with an already existing WhisperClan member, I'm gonna save it to later. What I can share now is that he's thoughtful and splashes in puddles. Yes, Puddlepaw likes to splash in puddles. It's very cute. <laughs> I love it very much. Um, along with being an apprentice, it looks like that his mentor is Velvet Shadow, who, you know, as we mentioned earlier, was the queen, uh, was a queen that had joined with um, now Bluffpaw and Fuzzpaw. So nice to see that everyone is really integrating into clan life despite being from what pretty much looks like all walks of life. That's Puddlepaw. I'm not gonna say too much more about him because what I really wanna cover is his backstory, but we're about to do that now because we're getting into the rest of the clan, the cats that we've known in previous years. First up as always, Barley Star, who, yes, we are going to be going over uh, Puddle Paw's backstory because she was very involved in how this occurred. Um, so, Barley Star, she's become quite the mama bear. An event popped up detailing that she was arguing and borderline fighting a Slate Clan Border Patrol. This is really surprising because if this isn't your first video, you'll know that Barley Star is a very um, anxious, yes, but also very pacifistic if that's the word cat she doesn't really rely on violence or fighting so this was really surprising to see especially since we're supposed to have a good relationship with slate clan whisper clan specifically with slate clan it took me a while to try and figure out how this would make sense story-wise without like breaking anyone's character but I think this has to do with our new apprentice Puddlepaw who was actually a former Slate Clan apprentice that Barley Star met on the border who was begging to join so this is how I think it went Barley Star was leading a patrol along the Slate Clan border and the group ran into one of their patrols the leader of the patrol was none other than Moonstar, who had actually anticipated running into Barley Star. This was so she could talk to her about having Puddlepaw brought back to his rightful clan. To this, Barley Star replied, saying that Puddlepaw had decided on his own that he wanted to leave their clan, and that even if she didn't know the reason, she wouldn't reject a cat who was clearly terrified and in need. The situation escalated quickly, with Moonstar threatening to take Puddlepaw back themselves. This is what sent Barley Star over the edge. She snapped saying that if Moonstar was smart, they wouldn't openly threaten taking her apprentice. Puddlepaw was a member of WhisperClay now, the moment he decided to stay. 
Barleystar even went on to declare that she would fight Moonstar themselves in order to make them recognize that Puddlepaw was a Whisper Clan cat now. This was met with shock, followed by Moonstar turning away in disgust. Getting in the last word, Moonstar warned Barleystar that this matter was not over as they walked away with their patrol. Before they were completely out of sight, Clover Splash, who was part of the patrol, noticed the cats that accompanied Moonstar were the only cats from Slate Clan he'd been seeing recently. And there we have it! We're starting to see some really interesting development from Barley Star. One thing's for sure, she is fiercely loyal to keeping her clan safe, no matter who they are or where they are from. Love that for her. So next up is Rainsail, who has actually retired from being a deputy due to old age. I was actually wondering when this would happen, and I'm glad for him. It's much better than the alternative, which would be him dying by some sort of cause before being able to step down. Because of how a young Barley Star is, it was incredibly unlikely that he would ever be leader, so this was the best thing to happen. I think another and more interesting reason he decided to step down was, well, he's done his role as a mentor. If you remember from year one, Raintail was chosen as deputy by Barley Star due to the guidance and experience he could give her. Now that she's evolved to be a confident and capable leader, he felt it would be best that the clan could have a deputy who would be much more driven and a bit younger. Although, here's the thing. Raintail and Barley Star's first choice for deputy was found dead outside the territory. I'll bring it up once I get to that cat's profile. I wanted to talk more about Raintail himself. We always seem to focus on what he does rather than how he feels. So focusing on relationships, he seems to get along fairly well with some of the other younger cats like Fallow Splinter and Clover Splash. Seemingly anyone apart from his own son. <laughs> Ouch. Raintail has just sort of become a father slash grandfather figure in the clan. He's definitely respected by them, whether individual cats dislike him or not. I really hope he lives for a while so he can continue to guide and teach the new generation of cats. Next cat! Yeah, we're already talking about who the new deputy is, so drumroll please. It's Hello Tail, and I'm just now realizing that the former and succeeding deputy have the suffix tail in their name. That's cute. This gal is totally having a Firestar moment, starting out as a kitty pet, becoming a warrior, working hard to show off their skills and being trusted enough by other warriors to be chosen as deputy. Maybe she'll actually be a leader after Barley Star. she is younger than her after all. Although I am expecting Barley Star to be around for a while. Anyway, I noticed in her relationship tabs that she has a dislike for Raintail. She doesn't seem to think that Raintail was fit to be deputy and was glad to hear that he was finally stepping down from the position. And ever since she took the role of deputy, she's had a newfound feeling of proving herself to be powerful and a respectable warrior, especially since she thinks that others see her as a soft kitty pet. I'm not sure how true this is since I haven't seen anyone express those thoughts outwardly, but Either way, there's no way she'll be going back to living with two legs. Hello Tail is a warrior through and through. Lastly, I thought I should mention last video. I talked about how I was suspicious about her being a formidable fighter despite living her life as a kitty pet before joining the clan. But then I saw a comment mentioning that in her history tab, Hello Tail was mistreated by their owner. This person then headcanoned that she fought back in order to escape the two leg, which developed the traits that she has now. Adding on to this thought, it's possible she ran into a couple of dogs before running into Whisper Clan, which would explain why she's so knowledgeable on how to take them down when on patrol. Yep, it's decided that this headcanon is now canon. I love taking suggestions like this, especially if they fit in with the story and characters. I, I couldn't quite find who specifically had commented this, but when I do find the comment, I'm gonna put that username into a pinned comment on this video just to show some thanks for coming up with some really cool ideas, so keep them coming. Next are the medicine cats, beginning with Cotton Cinder. I thought we wouldn't see too many rejections after Okus, but nope. Cotton Cinder turned Destiny down after she poured her heart out to her. Now they're sort of in a weird phase of their relationship. It's awkward, her apprentice Rabbitpaw can attest to that, but since they have the same role as Medicine Cat, they're forced to see each other all the time. What's more about the rejection is that their love is mutual, and I just can't understand why Cotton Center wouldn't want to be with Destiny. My only guess has something to do with Cotton Center's secret. Up in Star Clan, Blue Stripe was thinking about how Cotton Center had some sort of secret. Weird. No other information other than that, just that she has a secret, so there's no telling how 
diabolical or hopefully harmless the secret is, but maybe it has something to do with Destiny or something as to why they won't get with Destiny? I have no idea. But anyway, moving on to Destiny. I never really noticed until I delved into the relationship files, but wow, she has it kind of bad for Cotton Cinder. For example, one day the two of them went hunting together, okay? Cotton Cinder stumbled trying to catch a bird and Destiny thought it was cute. <laughs> there was another time, separate from this one, where Destiny noticed just how beautiful Cotton Cinder's eyes are. This poor, sweet, loving cat! I can't believe Cotton rejected her! They still hang out, collecting herbs and finding sunny spots to rest together, but there's just that awkward tension and constant questioning by Destiny in her head as to what exactly they are. Apart from the yearly love problems of Whisper Clan, Destiny was the receiver of many Star Clan messages this year. I guess her name really does fit. She was actually the one to perceive and interpret our first main story prophecy. Once again, we'll be seeing this animatic at the end of the video. Star Clan also warned her about things to come to Bluff Paw. Why do they have to be so vague? Needless to say, Destiny's been keeping a close eye on Bluff Paw, in case she's being warned once again that danger will come to him. Again, a very, very, very close eye, probably following him around, constantly asking him if he's doing okay, how his headaches are, if they're getting worse, if anything else is wrong, how he's doing, what's going on. <laughs> Although Bluff Paw is a bit put off from her slight helicopter behavior, she tries to be nice about it. Uh, we did have some deaths this year. On the very last moon, Okus died to his infections from an injury that caused his paw to get stuck in a two-leg trap. I am so disappointed. I was so excited to see what this guy could accomplish. What made it worse was how many moons he suffered before passing. Destiny tried communicating with the medicine cats from other clans despite her mastery in healing, but no one really had an answer. It seemed that it was too late for Okus to recover. Rest in peace, warrior. Please come and visit to give Whisper Clan a message every now and then. Back in the living world, the cat that had the worst time after finding out Okus's passing was Fallow Splinter, his not but kind of son. He and Barley Star were the ones to sit vigil with his body throughout the night, then burying him the following morning. What really hurt is that this was the first year Fallow Splinter had begun to love Okus like family, only for him to die this soon. He never even had the chance to tell Okus how much he meant to him. Nevertheless, in the moons before this event, Fallow Splinter certainly existed. Like Brackenfer in the books, he's always in the background doing things, but never has too much attention focused on him. We did find out that Fallow is hot on the market, with three different cats having a crush on him. Halautail, Destiny, and Frondfeather. Yet he doesn't have any crushes of his own. At all. Like, not a single like or crush for any of the cats in the clan. Um, perhaps he's possibly a romantic? Uh, the last thing to note that Fallow's done is going on quite a few patrols with Destiny, one of which they were visited by a cat from Star Clan. Fallow couldn't see the cat himself, but was signaled by the skilled medicine cat that they were in the presence of a ghost. So I have some more unfortunate news. On a patrol with his brother, Frondfather, the two of them ran into a group of two legs. Woodhusk wanted to stay away, but Frondfather stated that they shouldn't be scared, and this was a good place to hunt for mice. Without any further communication, Frondfather ran ahead, forcing Woodhusk to follow after him, as he didn't want to leave his brother by himself. Taking a step forward, Woodhusk suddenly heard a metallic clang. In a fright, he tried to run away, only to quickly crash into the walls of a two-leg device. He was trapped, the two-leg device rising up into the sky. Despite Frondfeather's attempts to fight the two legs carrying him off, hissing and yowling with determination to save his brother, it was quickly evident that the work of one cat could not match the strength and size of these brutes. The two legs disappeared into a monster, taking Woodhusk with them. For one last time, the brothers' eyes met, both filled with pain and remorse for the actions that led them here. I am so sad about this. I really liked Woodhusk. The only good thing about this event was that Frondfeather wasn't taken as well. Moving on to Frondfeather specifically, he is having the worst year of his life. Not only was his mother found dead, but his brother was taken. The only resemblance a family has left is Clover Splash. 
While they aren't related by blood, they grew up together along with Woodhusk. To cope, Frondfeather has been by Clover Splash's side every moment. I don't think he'll be able to handle being alone for a while. He's become really codependent. We've already covered this cat, but it's routine that we cover the dead cats whenever it's their turn in the roster. And it's Silver's turn. Earlier I mentioned that she could have been deputy, and the reason I say this is because when I checked the XP levels of everyone, when she was still alive, she actually outranked Raintail, who was deputy at the time. Which meant that the only cat that had more experience than her was Barley Star. This really makes me think that she was murdered by someone in order to prevent her from becoming deputy. We don't have any leads in the clan or outside the clan. Overall, this is just a really sad end to her life. She could have lived a really good rest of her life, being promoted to deputy, watching her sons live as warriors in the clan that took them in. Man, rest in peace and swift running silver. We have had so much bad news, so on a happier note, Clover Splash has really been rocking it this year. Not only have they been a huge support for Frondfeather's mental health this year, but they've been the sole reason we have a good relationship with the largest clan in the forest territory, Ember Clan. That's right, we've been introduced to the final existing clan in our game. The Ember Clan patrol Clover and Frondfeather ran into were actually pretty nasty, jeering and laughing at them. Clover Splash didn't let that phase him though, and basically lightened the mood with jokes and self-burns. We love to see a leader in the making. I think they could actually make a good deputy if the opportunity ever presented itself. There's something else I'm missing. Oh yeah, Clover Splash announced to themselves to be non-binary, in case you couldn't tell from the change in pronouns as I was talking about Clover. They also celebrated by adorning themselves with lavender they found on a walk. Overall, great year for them. At least someone in the clan is having a good life right now. Our last cat is Rick Thunder, who has retired and is in the Elder's Den with Raintail. I haven't seen much from her this year, but there was a really cute event in the game where she and Raintail watched some of the kits play in the leaves. This was during Leaf Fall, or Autumn, if you don't read the books. As for her secret lover in Slate Clan, nothing new has come up. I suppose they drifted apart, so no one ever really found out about it. I will say that after playing Slate Clan's file up to 36 moons like Whisper Clan, I know who her lover was. I based this off of the events in Slate Clan's game and the age of the cat. So, Rook Thunder was actually seeing the deputy of Slate Clan, Quiverfeather, who actually has a mate in his clan. The drama does not stop. It is a shame that we couldn't see the soap opera develop any more than it did, but maybe it's for the best. We already have several storylines beginning and coming up, so I'm not sure how many more I can do before I completely lose track of everything. Well, that's all the cats in Whisper Clan. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we can finally move on to our prophecy and how it was received. Last animatic sequence of the year. Let's go. One paw after the other, Destiny finds herself in the forest. It takes her a moment to realize that she cannot recognize the surroundings around her. Something about the way the trees twisted over her head seemed strange, and the grass pricked her pads the way the forest she knew never would. There was no doubt. She was lost. Upon realizing this, her heart began to race. Destiny picked up the pace, and soon her walking turned into sprinting, as she was bounding over tangles of rocks, roots, and mounds. Soon, the sound of eerie murmurs began to fill her head, a wave of directionless sound echoing all around her. With a yowl, her legs came crashing into the ground in front of her, throwing her body across the dirt. Destiny's eyes shot up in despair as she met with pairs and pairs of eyes of faceless cats, their murmurs turning into shrieks. Suddenly, the noise died down. Finally able to pry her eyes open, Destiny found herself face to face with a single cat, their muzzle inches away from her own. A wave of calm rushed over her like water. For whatever reason, Destiny felt at ease in the presence of this cat, despite the previous nightmares she had just faced. Further inspecting the figure's broad shoulders and curled fur, she began to realize why. This was the former medicine cat she had heard so many stories of from Cotton Center, Blue Stripe. It seems you recognize who I am. Blue Stripe uttered, their voice somehow soft yet thundering, their words echoing straight into Destiny's mind. That's good. I have a message for you and our clan. As they spoke, 
The surrounding foliage began to fade, and the two cats were surrounded by nothing but empty grasslands and the star-filled sky above, getting brighter by the second. I only have so much time, Bluestripe cried. Heed my words and forget them not. Eyes glowing like the moon, she chanted. A whisper echoes through the night. For good or for worse, the stars will burn. Destiny awoke. Pulsing straight up, she finds herself back in Whisperclan's medicine cat den. Cotton Cinder sleeping by her side, her flank peacefully rising up and down. With a shaky breath, Destiny calms down and brings herself back to her senses. It was a dream. A prophecy. She had to tell everyone. And that's year three. Fun fact, I actually forgot to mention a couple of things that I couldn't edit in after remembering them. Uh, for some reason, iMovie doesn't like it when I put in new audio and clips in the middle of the, like, editing of the video. Because it, like, it shifts already existed recordings around and even cuts off the beginning of some audio. No idea why. Moving on. Um, Puddle Paw and Fuzz Paw actually have crushes on each other. Um, really cute. Uh, I found this super exciting because this is the first time I've had two apprentices crush on each other ever in clan gen. I don't know if that's a rare thing for all people, but it's a very rare thing for me. Um, but I'm excited. I desperately need more couples in this game. Well, I, why is everyone rejecting each other? Oh my gosh. Um, with Bloom Paw, um, you could see in his drawing that he was wearing like a, um, like a bell collar, like a nylon, some sort of collar. He didn't come to the clan like that. He had actually, at the end of the year, disappeared for a couple of days, and then he came back wearing it. Um, where he went? I don't know. Last thing to mention is that earlier in the video, I said we had met with Ember Clan for the first time this year. Not true. Uh, we met them on a patrol in a previous year. I don't know why I wrote in the script that that was the first time we met them. Like, I stated it in... A video that I posted I don't I don't remember if it was year two or year one it was probably year two but anyway um, I probably probably forgot to mention a couple of other things but that's all I caught while editing the video now I can finally feature the full-length drawings of our clan um, you can play it back and notice that each cat has an icon above them which indicates their origins before whisper clan since the founding members came from Slate Clan, Ember Clan, and Iris Clan, the uh, previous clans in the territories, um, since they came from those places before joining Whisper Clan, or before creating Whisper Clan, it's now revealed who belonged where. Um, Barley Star used to live in Ember Clan, that's fascinating. Uh, and since some of our founding members uh, who passed on and aren't in the living lineup anymore, if you want to know, Oak Goose belonged in Slate Clan, Whisper Tuft and Blue Stripe belonged in Iris Clan. Uh, I didn't label the clans, I just put in their icon and I assumed that you'd be able to like tell like, oh, this one's Ember Clan because it has fire. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is all for year three. Uh, you can see I'm back to my normal sprites here. They're shaded now. Yay! Uh, but that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else. I'm currently working on the script for year four, and I finished the recording of the gameplay for year five, so things are moving right along. I'm really hoping I can get back into the groove of posting Whisper Clan stuff because I genuinely have so much fun with it. Um, okay, nothing else to say. That's all for now. Bye bye.